Today, uh, we are supposed to discuss uh, interpretation. Uh, what is interpretation? What is the function of interpretation? Uh, the first thing uh, I would like to, to discuss is um, the negative connotation that very often carries uh, the concept of interpretation where people will, someone will tell somebody else, uh, this is an interpretation, yeah? And by seeing this as an interpretation, it implies that it's not objective, that it's not factual, uh, that it's not reliable, and therefore interpretation is viewed as something which is not good, uh, which is not, not truthful, right? So, uh, first, I, I would like then to, to uh, give its credit to, to interpretation from this standpoint. And here, uh, by using an idea of Nietzsche, which is that he, he writes that there's no facts, there's only interpretation. Yeah? A fact, something totally objective, in a way, um, cannot be said. Uh, uh, the fact is in the object itself. So we cannot say uh, a fact is a bit of a, a contradiction of principle because uh, we're going to be using words to say something. So whatever we say, whatever we describe about uh, the world, about anything, there are words, uh, and words are never uh, the objective, the reality of something. It attempts to, to describe it, to approximate, to give an idea of it, but it's always a choice. Uh, we choose words, we choose, as well, we choose the way we're going to describe this, uh, the phenomenon. A typical example is when two people have an accident, and just they come from two different uh, directions, they have different interests, yeah, they will describe the fact of the accident or even draw it actually uh, in, a, in a different way. Yeah, so uh, it's, well, in science, maybe there's a little bit more fact, but still, uh, because theories change about how to describe the world. <clears throat> but what is true for science is even more true for anything having to do with, with a human, uh, which is full of, uh, of subjectivity. So, in a way, uh, we cannot avoid interpretation. We cannot pretend to any absolutely objective description of the world, of anything we are, we are talking about. Yeah? Uh, so, that, that's a, a, defense, a defensive position on interpretation. But I would like to give something uh, probably more, more positive and stronger as a defense of interpretation. Uh, which is that it's the form that understanding takes. Yeah? So when a teacher speaks, for example, and he has to show students what, what they, they, they understood, if they repeat his words, they don't know if he's understood or not. Maybe the, the student has a good memory, repeats, does not understand. So uh, the way you know that uh, how can we tell that something is understood? It's only through interpretation. Because the student in this case will use his own words uh, to, uh, to indicate how he internalized, how he was digesting the idea of the teacher, and therefore he will give an interpretation. Yeah? Now, the idea that interpretation, there, there are two dimensions. There's what we can call the objective dimension and the subjective dimension. Um, an interpretation needs a certain dose of objectivity, uh, meaning that when I listen to an interpretation, if I don't or nobody recognizes it, uh, it has anything to do with the phenomenon or the object we're speaking about, we will say, well, this is not interpretation. This is imagination. And imagination has no, no limits, no, no boundary, no, no constraint. So when there is an interpretation, we should make some connection, establish some you know, causal or an analogical relation between the speech and what we're talking about. Yeah? So otherwise we say, no, it's not, there's not, no objectivity there. 
But at the same time, there is a subjective dimension because an interpretation is sort of a perspective, a way, an angle, uh, a certain manner by which we will uh, speak about something, we will describe it, we will show uh, our, our, our understanding of it, and somebody else can as well then add something or give a different way by which he's uh, understanding the, 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 same, the same phenomenon. So in a way, interpretations uh, do not uh, exclude each other. Well, th they can exclude each other if they claim a certain, or they make certain statements that radically oppose or prohibit each other. Yeah? And then you have a problem and we have to check which interpretation is more, um, is more uh, adequate, more valuable. But very often interpretation, they, they, they can combine each other. Eh? Like a, uh, you describe a coin from two different sides or whatever situation from different angle. You can describe a phenomenon from um, a material standpoint, from a psychological standpoint, from an aesthetic standpoint. Yeah? So these are different interpretations through different paradigm. But they won't, uh, you, one cannot say, I don't agree with you. It would not make sense. It's just to say, I have a different angles, a different angle for uh, interpretation of the, of the phenomenon. And then we can check uh, if there's a dialogue, if the different interpretations can fit together or if they, if they can uh, exclude each other. Yeah. Now, another aspect of interpretation that's both important, that, that makes it difficult and a reason why often we don't like the concept of interpretation, is that an interpretation uh, is not uh, an analytic judgment where we, like a definition in, the, in the dictionaries, where we expect a certain type of, of certitude, where it's something essential. Uh, an interpretation most of the time has to do more with uh, what is plausible, what is probable, what makes sense, but it doesn't have to be what is necessary. And in fact, to come back to Nietzsche, he wanted to replace the idea of being true with the idea of making sense. Uh, and that's another uh, point that is difficult with lots of people because uh, they want certitude. They, for them, knowledge is to be absolutely sure. It's like what the book says, what the teacher says, yeah. But interpretation implies that whatever we say, whatever we think, it's a certain angle to, to, to look at the world, and it has to be probable, but, but not definite, not, not necessary. And that's a problem, yeah, because it implies to make a judgment, and then people have fear of judgment because they, they might be wrong, because we're not sure. So we prefer knowledge, because knowledge has the connotation of being, uh, of being uh, sure, of being unquestionable, yeah. So for interpretation, we have to accept a certain dose of probability and absence of certainty, but then we can examine the interpretation, see if it makes sense, uh, if it fits the content, and, and, and what is the degree of probability of, of, of an interpretation. Yeah. And then th th that implies that when we, we give an interpretation, we judge. Uh, for example, when we give an interpretation of someone's action, that's uh, a classical one. And then judgment again um, bothers people. So what right do I have to judge? How am I sure that what I'm saying is true? How can it be absolutely true? Yeah, there's a really strong desire of certitude. Yeah. And who are you uh, to make this judgment? Because indeed, to give interpretation, you need to trust yourself that uh, you have the authority to think because you have access to, to, to reason. Yeah? And then you have the authority to, to, to make uh, to make judgments, so you have to, to trust yourself, but at the same time be open to check if the interpretation makes sense or doesn't make sense. And it's the same thing when we we try to understand people, like in a philosophy consultation, of course, we, we make judgment, we make interpretation of people's uh, uh, words and gestures and behavior, 
but we are always ready to check uh, the validity or the appropriateness of, of those judgments through dialogue, through new information, whatever. Yeah. So in that sense, interpretation is an art, uh, the art of constructing meaning, the art of constructing understanding, and it is an art as well because there's some uh, flexibility in it. Uh, it is some to, to, to give interpretation, one has to remain flexible to be able to rewrite his, his interpretation. Yeah? And that's why some people might not be happy with a sense of, uh, of a never-ending work. Uh, interpretation, in a way, is never-ending work. It's never, it can never be called definitive. The work is, is never finished. I said that interpretation is not an analytic judgment, like uh, definition, for example, but it is more a synthetic judgment, according to Kant's distinction, which means that when we give an interpretation, it's not simply uh, the immediate content that we are dealing with, but we make connection with our experience, with our reason, yeah? we connect to other outside information, uh, which can give a more concrete, but as well a more subjective uh, way to, um, to uh, explain or, or define something. Yeah? And that's what's important in the concept of a synthetic judgment, yeah? which implies to bring new ideas to, to explain something which not be can totally contained initially. So in a way, we can even contextualize or give examples and when we give uh, an interpretation. So I thought it was an important point to add uh, the difference between synthetic judgment and analytic judgment.